Hey there. Today we're going to talk about layer masking uh, and specifically using masking to create a smooth visual blend between two objects so that they appear to merge, kind of creating a mutant. Okay, so first of all I've got an image here of a banana. This is one I find every time uh, I google the word banana and restrict the large image sizes and I've taken my time to make a nice clear path around the outside. So from a vector tool, right click or control click on the Mac keyboard to make selection. Because I know that my pixel um, dimensions are pretty big, I know that a one pixel feathering radius is not going to be too large. It's just going to create a slightly softer visual edge. Copy, making sure to target the background. That's Command C. And then over here in this other image, I've already created a nice tight isolation of this uh, elephant image that we're using for a different project. Okay, I will hit Paste or Command V. This thing comes in nice and big, so Command T or Transform uh, allows me to start manipulating it. Now, of course, I want to take this uh, banana and switch it out for the tusk. So the first thing I want to do is flip this thing to mirror it on either side of the vertical plane so I can right-click and uh, flip horizontal. That gets me there. I'm going to hold Shift and Option, which will allow me to drag towards the center. And then as I get closer and closer, I can start to uh, manipulate the um, rotation and so forth. Now, if you take a look at this thing, this particular image actually doesn't really require uh, masking, depending on what you're trying to do, because I have such a nicely defined line right here. But because I'm trying to do a masking demonstration, I'm just going to force it. All right, so let's get this thing nice and close. You want to keep it large enough so it's still identifiable in terms of what it is. And why don't we pick it up someplace like that. Okay, once, I, uh, once I'm satisfied, I can hit enter. And if it's a little bit too big, that's actually okay uh, because we can always make it slightly smaller. So I'll zoom in another couple of steps. Now, part of this process is aided by the fact that both my banana and my elephant's head are isolated, meaning that I can crossfade between the two, but I won't necessarily have implications for the background. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm going to title my banana layer, so I can keep track, so banana, it's kind of hard to see, and I'll title this head as an elephant head, and select my banana and uh, get the masking process started. That involves switching black to the foreground color, step one. Step two is picking the gradient tool, which you might find hidden underneath the paint bucket. If you see a paint bucket, just hold down the mouse till gradient pops up. All right, step three, make sure that the gradient style is the second one. That means we're transitioning from black to transparent, as opposed to from black to another solid color. Uh, step four, if I'm keeping track right, is you want to pick the geometry with which the gradient is laid down. So here I'm going to choose a radial as my method. And then you want to leave the rest of these just like you see. Uh, if you're getting some funky results, just make sure that you've zeroed all this out. You know, opacity 100%, mode normal, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so with all those in place, um, I'm also going to go to Layer, Layer Mask, and Reveal All. And you'll see that based on the target layer that I had select the banana, uh, I lay in basically a control track of white pixels that virtually cover the entire image. Now I can't see anything because layer mask pixels are not directly visible. Rather, every time a pixel on a layer falls underneath a white pixel in the layer mask, uh, we know that the image pixel itself should be fully opaque. So that's why my banana has not changed in any way. And that's also why when I start to add a black gradient to this white mask, I will start to lose uh, opacity all the way down to zero in my banana itself. So I've got my gradient tool all pre-selected. I'll come in here and start dragging lines in and we'll see how the um, how the process goes from one side to another. Of course, as I'm speaking, I ignore the fact that I actually want to do this in the other direction. So I'll hit step backwards, which is edit, step backwards, uh, get back to my white layer mask, and then start to add the stuff in again. Okay, so I can see that it looks like I um, overshot my size pretty significantly, so I'll click on the banana and I'll get in here and uh, try to tune this up a little bit. You can see that I can actually do this along with the um, layer mask, which is convenient. And that angle's looking pretty good. Just wanna make sure I don't get like a visual sort of kink in there. OK, 
Okay, I'm liking that. So that's actually pretty good to start. I'm going to use this as a basis for this next operation, which will involve carving away the part of the tusk that is no longer needed. I don't want to wind up just deleting parts of the tusk that are directly underneath the banana because I want to keep that there for uh, cross-fading purposes. So back to the pen tool. And you guys certainly have um, watched me do this enough. I don't need to bore you with the uh, details. When it comes to this area, I can just define it very loosely because I only really care about where the tusk meets the banana. Right click to make selection, maybe a one pixel feathering radius. Target the head, right, because the head is where the pixels of the tusk reside. And then hit delete to get rid of those. And command D to deselect the selected area. And then we wind up with something like that. Not bad.